My gal, the gal I was with that time out of Oklahoma, had caught four robbery cases. And we was, we was Bonnie and Clyde back then. Really, we was riding and taking money and, and we was all up in Oklahoma and Texas and we, we were terrorizing. <laughs> so this one chick in my hometown who, who really had been jibbing me down through the years, I wouldn't give her no shot. When the word got out that they was looking for this chick who was committing these robberies, it was another gal who looked a lot like my gal. They called my gal Slim. She was tall, pretty gal, half Indian. Well, this other gal looked a lot like her, but that's who they was looking for. But this girl, in order for her to get out of jail, she give my gal up. And it was soldier's payday around that time. So I said, well, we're gonna stay out there for a couple days extra day. But my gal was also a thief. You know, we, we ride and she knocking stuff off, you know what I'm saying? I got a trunk full of brand new clothes. I got about seven, eight hundred dollars in my pocket. So we in the motel, raining cats and dogs. By two o'clock in the morning, bam, 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 bam. Knock on the door. I go to the door, it's the law. So they tell me they looking for my old lady. I said, well, what you looking for, for? Well, it's suspicion of rock, you know, blah, 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 this, that, nothing. Now, we got by. I don't know, probably 60, 70 dollars in change in a bag. Now she got a bunch of underwear stuff and I got some clothes stuff in the dresser drawers, but my trunk is full of clothes. You know, I got brand new stuff with the tag still on. We said we done tore off the name of the store. I said, man, let me get dressed. So I get dressed. I said, y'all, we need to come out so she can get dressed. Well, why? He said, okay. So he brain me, handcuffed me, take me out, put me in the car. So while we wait for her to get dressed, now we got three pistols. And all the pistols are laid up on the dresser. You know what I'm saying? So the thing they did, if they trying to get her, cause the cops ain't, I mean, the, the, the people who got stores got robbed, they ain't never seen me. But they trying to get her to say that I made her do it. And she wouldn't do it. They couldn't get her to flip on me so they gave me the weed case, all right? But anyway, I made bond. I called my mama as soon as I got to the police station. She came up there and got my car. But they had coasted, you know, they searched my car, took all the clothes and stuff out. Man, I go back to Fort Worth. Now I got to try to find, she got $140,000 bond, bond lady do. So I go back to Fort Worth and I'm trying to, trying to come up with some money to get to make my bond. Cause now I find out she's pregnant with my son, my, my baby boy. Her, her stepdaddy wouldn't help us at all. You know, they had a bad relationship. He said, I ain't been to do this, that, no, he was a truck driver. Now, I ain't got nobody else to help me, you know, to raise this money. So, I get with another partner of mine that I did time with, another old gangster. And, and, and they all like my gal. You know, all the dudes up on the street for work, they like my gal, because the kind of gal she was, you know what I'm saying? Dude said, man, I'm gonna help you. He said, I got a spot. It ought to be good for about seven grand, you know, and we ought to be able to knock that off tonight. I said, okay. Well, while I'm waiting during the day for the night to come, this other dude that's staying with me, youngster, man, 21 years old, he come to me. Now, his, he got a guy, this woman to put him out. He married, got two kids. But his wife didn't put him out, so he trying to get back with her. So he needs some money, you understand? So he like, man, he got this spot over here on the north side, man. We can knock that off, blah, blah, blah. And he kept worming, 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 worming. I said, man, come on, man. You know, I ain't got nothing else to do. Right. So I'm going to go over there with him, make this little piece of money, I think, and come up out of there. Then that night, me and my boy are going to go knock this other spot off. Man, I go up in there, and I just get a feeling about this place. Now, I don't, I'm getting there shopping. There's a grocery store. I can get that, get some stuff and whatever. But when I get to the counter, I see this dude, you know, he got, I see this big hump in this. He got an apron on, but I see this hump in the front. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, this son got a gun. So I say, uh, wait just a minute. Now, what I started, what I was intending to do was turn around and walk out of there. But when I turned around, unbeknownst to me, the dude I'm with, he pulls a pistol. Well, at the time, now here we are at the counter. I'm facing the man. 
Okay, over here is the meat counter. Behind the meat counter is the man's son, who had just come back from Vietnam. Right to the left of that counter is a storeroom like thing. So, you know, it's access, you have access to go through this room and go into behind the counter. Well, there ain't no light in there. I don't realize this guy is standing in there with an M1 carbine in that room. So when, when the boy pulled the pistol, he gets shot. This man pulls out 357 Magnum, hit him in the chest three times. Then I get shot. The son starts shooting me with the M1 carbine. I get hit in the both hips, in my stomach, in my groin, in my leg, you know. I'm getting shot all kinds of ways. I got a pistol, I ain't no pull it out. So then, this boy's trying to get out of there. He runs out in the middle of North Savannah, which is the main avenue, and falls dead in the middle of the street. Now, I don't know this, cause I falls into place. So while I'm laying there in the floor, I'm thinking to myself, well, boy, this is how it's going in. And a small steel boy said, no, it ain't. Well, the, the old man that shot up all his bullets, he's standing over me trying to reload his pistol. And he's trembling and shaking and going on. And his son just come up and snatched the pistol out of his hand. He said, that's enough. He ain't no threat. He ain't gonna, you know, he ain't no threat to you. Give me that pistol. That's enough. That's enough shooting. Well, this other kid is already dead. When, they, when the EMTs got there, they come in, they get me, put me on a stretcher, and they use pressure bandages, you know, to stop the bleeding. Cause I'm bleeding from so many places. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, and I, I got blood, his blood everywhere. So I get to the hospital, they take me to John Peter Smith Hospital. And uh, I don't know if I call my partner or not. Somebody called him, somebody had, they found out. And, uh, I look up and I just about eight dudes over there to give me blood, you know. Well, I'm going in and out of consciousness because I lost so much blood. They almost shot this leg off. And, and, and they trying to take x-rays and they're trying to get me to keep my feet together like this, but I ain't got no control over my left leg because it's shot to pieces. And every time the guy, whoever it is trying to take the x-ray, move it, man, it's like, you know, pain just shoot to, to me from everywhere. So I've been there cussing out the x-ray technicians, you know what I'm saying? But finally, I, get, I guess I must have passed out. The next thing I know, I'm in, uh, I'm in you know, the critical care unit, and they ain't doing me nothing. They just, they, you know, after the bleeding was stopped, they just pushed me off in the corner because they thought I was gonna die. Thank God, all through the night, Different nurses, they had a lot of black nurses and you know, guys and women was coming in and out checking on me and, and you know, different things like that. But got me through the night. Now, now I, this happened about four o'clock in the afternoon. My mama got up there, I guess around 1.30 or two o'clock the next day when she caught the bus. And she raised so much hell when she found out they hadn't helped me, they started prepping me for surgery. I don't get the surgery almost 24 hours later. Now I still got all this lead in my body. I ain't bleeding no more, but I got an open wound. So finally I get the surgery. I guess about 4.30, 5 o'clock, the day after I get shot. And uh, I'm in the hospital, I don't know, about three months. You know, this, I almost lost this man. So I ended up getting 10 years after I got shot. Getting shot and getting 10 years. And then the case that I had in Temple for the weed, they give me 10 years on that case. They run them CC. So hey, I'll go back to the penitentiary in 1971. And I did five years, 10 months on that.